Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, and today, guys, we are reading Chapter 8 of Racing in the Rain <coughs> by Garfstein. And guys, let's get started on Chapter 8 after I got a drink of water. Me. Let's get started in Chapter 8. One summer Saturday afternoon, we went to the morning at the beach at Alki Swimming and eat and eating fish and chips from Spuds. <clears throat> when we returned to the house, red, red and tired from the sun, Eve put Zoe down from a, for a nap. Denny and I sat in front of the TV to study. He put on a tape of long distance race. He had driven, he had, he had, his, <clears throat> it was an, ex wait, he had driven in Portland a few weeks earlier. It was an exciting race, eight hours long, in which Denny and his two co-drivers took turns behind the wheel in two-hour shifts. They came in first, then Denny's last minute heroics which included recovering from a near spin to overtake to competitors to competitors Denny started the tape of the beginning of his final stint the track was wet in the sky heavy with dark cloud and threatened more rain we watched several rap laps in silence Denny drove smoothly and almost alone his team had fallen behind after making the crucial decision to pull into his pits and switch to rain tires. Other racing teams had predicted the rain had predicted the rain would pass and so and so had gained more than two laps on Denny's team. Yet the rain began again, which gave Denny a great advantage Denny quickly and easily passed cars from other classes. There were underpowered myatis and darted through the turns with their excellent balance. Big engine. Vipers with their lousy handling. Denny in his quick and muscular porch sli slicing through the rain. How... How come you do go through the turn so much faster than the other cars, Eve asked. Look up. She stood in the doorway, watching the, watching with us. Most of them aren't running rain tires, Denny said. Eve took a seat on the sofa next to Denny. But some of them are. Yes, some, yes, some he said. We watched Denny drove up behind a yellow Camaro at the end of the back straight and though it was as if he if he could have taken the other car in the turn 12 12 he held back Eve noticed why why didn't you pass him she asked I know him he's got too much power and would just pass me back on the straight on a straight, I think I take him in the next series of turns. Yes, I yes at the next turn. Denny was inches from the Camaro's rear bumper. He he rode tight through the double turn and then took the inside line for the next turn and he zipped right by. This part of the track is really slick in the rain, he said. He was back. He was, he was too back way off. By the time he gets to his the grip, back I'm out of his reach. On the back straight again, the Camaro could be seen in Denny's re rear view mirror, mirror fading into the background. Did he have rain tires? Eve asked. I think so, but this car wasn't set up right. Still, you're driving like the track isn't wet. And everyone else is driving like it is. Turn twelve and blasting down the straight, we could, we could see brake lights of the com 
competition flicker ahead. Denny's next victims. We are the creators of our own destiny, Denny said softly. What? Eve said. When I was 19, Denny said after a moment at my first driving school down at the Stars Point. It was raining and they were trying to, to teach us how I to drive in the rain. After the instructors were finishing explaining all their secrets, all the students were t totally confused. We had no idea that they were talking about. I looked over at the guy next to me. I remembered him. He was from France, and he was very fast. He smiled, and he said, We are the creators of our own destiny. Eve stuck out her lower lip and squinted at Denny. And then everything made sense. She was jokingly. That's right, Denny said seriously. That's right, Denny said seriously. On the TV, the rain didn't stop. It kept coming. Denny's team had made the right choice. Other teams were pulling off into hot pits to change the rain tires. To change to rain tires. Drivers are afraid of the rain, Denny told us. Rain makes your mistakes even worse. And water of the track can make you your car handle unpredictable. Dictably. When some can make your car handle unpredictably, when, when something unpredictable happens, you can have to react to it. If you're reacting at speed, you're reacting too late. And so you're reacting to, at speed, you're reacting too late. And so sh you should be afraid. If I... If... I intentionally make the car do something, then I can predict what what it's going to do. In other words, it's only predictable if I'm not possessing it. So you spin the car before the car spins itself, she asked. That's it. If I de deliberately do something, then I know it's going to happen before it happens. Then I can react to it before before even the car knows it's happening. And you can do that on the TV screen. Denny could be seen dashing past other cars. His rear end suddenly slipped out of the car. Got sideways, but his hands were already turning so correct to correct, and he was off again, leaving the others behind. Eve, Eve sighed in relief, held her hand to her forehead. I love you, she said. I love you. I love all of you, even your racing. And I know on some level that you are completely right about this, all about all this. I just don't think I could ever do it myself. She went off into the kitchen. Denny and I continued watching the cars on the video as they drove around and around the circuit, drenched in the darkness. I will never, I will never tire of watching tapes. And with Denny, he knows so much and I have learned so much from from he from him he said nothing more than to me he used watching his tapes but my thoughts turned to what he had used just taught me just a simple concept yet so true we were all the cre the create creators of our own destiny be it be it though intention and or ignorance our success for our success and our failures have been brought on by none other than ourselves i left denny at the tv at the tv and walked into the kitchen eve was preparing dinner and she looked at me when i entered bored with the race she asked casually i wasn't bored i could have watched the race all that day and all the next, 
I was creating my own destiny. I lay down near the refrigerator in my favorite spot of mine and rested. I could tell she felt self-conscious with me there. Usually, if Danny was in the house, I spent my time by that side that I that I had chosen to be with her now seemed to be confuse her. She didn't understand my intentions, but then she got rolling with dinner and she forgot about me. First she started with started some hamburger frying, which smelled good. Then she washed some lettuce and spun it dry. She sliced apples and added onions and garlic to the pot and then a can of tomatoes. And the kitchen was rich with the smell of food. The smell, the smell of food. The smell of, the smell of it and the heat of the day made me feel quite drowsy. So I must, so I must have nodded off. Then I felt her hands on me, stroking my side and scratching my belly. And I rolled over on my back to acknowledge her my reward was more of the comfortable scratches sweet dog she said to me sweet dog she returned to her preparations preparations pausing only occasionally to scrub my neck with her bare foot as she passed which wasn't all that much she meant a lot a lot to me anyway was made denny was right we are the creators of our own destiny. Chapter 9, guys. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this book. I mean, chapter, but I looked at the chapter, and it's pretty short. So, guys, I'm just going to read the chapter 11 for you guys because it's very short. And let's get started with chapter 9 as well. <laughs> Okay, a couple of years after we moved into the new house, something very frightening happened. Earlier that spring, Denny had gone to France for a formula result testing program. He did exceptions alley well in the program because it was in France in the spring when it rains. When he told Eve about it, he said that one of the scouts would attend these things approached after the season and said, can you drive as fast on on dry tracks as you can on wet ones? And Denny looked him straight in the eyes and replied, supply, try me. The scout offered Denny a tryout, and Denny went was a big deal. He did so well that, off, that they offered him a seat in the endurance race at the Wackings Glen. When he first left to New York, he, we all grinned at each other because we couldn't wait to watch the race on the Speed Channel. It's so exciting. Eve could, would giggle, would giggle. Daddy's a pro professional race car, dri car driver. And Zoe, who, whom I loved very much and would not hesitate to sacrifice my own life to protect would would not hesitate to sacrifice my own life and to protect would cheer and hop into her little race car they kept in the living room then then she would drive around in circles until we were all dizzy and then throw her hands into the air and proclaim i am the champion i got so I got so caught up in the excitement, I was doing idiotic dog things, like digging up the lawn, balling myself up, and then stretching out on the floor with all my legs straight and my back. Arched out on the floor with my legs straight on and my back, arched and letting them scratch my belly, and chasing things. I chased. It was my best of times, really. And then it was the worst of times. Race day came, and Eve woke up very early, feeling awful. She had the pain so terrible that she stood in the kitchen and vomited violently into the sink. 
She vomited as if she were turning herself into inside out. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me, Enzo, she said, and she rarely spoke to me cut candidly like that. Like how Denny talks to me, as if I'm his true friend, his soulmate. The last time she had talked to me like that was when Zoe was born. But this time she did she did talk she did talk to me like I was her soulmate. She asked, What's wrong with me? She knew I could answer, and I felt totally frustrated because I hadn't an answer. I knew what was wrong, but I had no way to tell her, so I pushed at the thigh with my muzzle. I I nosed in and buried my face between her legs, and I waited there afraid. I felt I feel someone crushing my skull, she said. I couldn't res respond. I had no words. There was nothing I could do. Someone cr crushing my skull, she repeated. And and quickly she gathered some things while I watched. She shoved Zoe's clothes into a bag and some of her own and two fresh's also fast. And she bruised Zoe and stuffed her little kid feet into her little kid sneakers and bang the door slammed shut and then snick snick the dead bolt was thrown and there were gone and I wasn't gone I was there I was still there chapter 10 ideally a driver and a mass in a master to of all that is around around him Denny says Ideally, it might be Italy. I think it's ideally. A driver controls the car so completely that he corrects a spin before it happens. He anticipates all possibilities. But we don't live in an ideal word world in our world. Surprises sometimes happen, mistakes happen, incidents with other drivers happen and driver must react react when a driver reacts denny says it's important to remember that a car only as good as its tires if the tire gl lose their grip nothing else matters not engine power speed of braking nothing else counts with a skid start until the tire regain their grip the, t the driver is unable to control the car, and that's a bad situation. It is imp important for the driver to override his natural fear when in when a car begins to spin and the driver may panic and lift his foot off the gas. If he does, he will throw for weight on the car of the car of the car toward the front wheel wheels then the tr then the re rear end will snap around and the car will spin a good driver will try to stop the spinning the spin by turning his wheels in the in the direction the car's moving he may succeed however at the crit critical point at the skidding stops and he suddenly the tires grip the road but his front wheels are now turned in the wrong direction this causes a a counter spin in the other direction the secondary spin is much faster and more dangerous if however when the tire begins to break free our driver increases his pressure on the accelerator and at the same time eases out on the steering wheel ever so lightly this will less this will lessen the lateral G forces forces lateral G forces at work the spin will will therefore be corrected so our driver is still in control of of his car he is able to act in the p positive manner he still can create an ending to his story in which he completes the race without incident and perhaps 
in his creating is good, he will win. Chapter 11, guys. So, guys, we're ending this book right here. I mean, this chapter right here on chapter 11. And I hope you're having a great day, guys, and a great summer. And, guys, I hope you're enjoying this book, too. Bye, guys. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment all down below. And, guys, I have made a gaming video for you guys that I'm going to upload after this video. And, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Bye. See you next time.